best growth marketers in the world, so spend time here and less time on Facebook. Don't worry too much about the colour of the buttons, the way the buttons are on day one. You just have to get traffic. Traffic is everything. Websites die because they don't get traffic. Once you get the traffic, you can always tweak things and make things better. But if you don't get that traffic, you're dead on arrival. Be a mixture of madmen and mathmen. Madmen take massive risks, but they deliver massive value to their clients. You want to be doing the same. And mathmen, you need to be measuring everything, understanding the basics of things like Google Analytics and Bitly. They're pretty much the two main pieces you need to know, and then as things get more complex, you need to know more, but you need to understand why measuring things is important. This is a $9 marketing stack. It contains things like segment, so all of your customer data in one place. Google Analytics shows who's on your website and where they came from. Mixed panel enables you to do cool things like tag a user that you've acquired via Facebook, and then email them if they haven't logged in in a week. Optimizely enables you to split test different messages to get higher signups. Active Campaign is the email marketing software. Scrollbox by Sumo Me is a really cool app to capture more emails. And Perfect Audience is retargeting widgets. So if someone lands on your website and doesn't convert, they have banners that follow them around the web saying get 10% off if you come back or whatever it is you do so you can convert more users. Pull more resources into the ones that work. If you find one thing is providing more of your users, then absolutely rinse that. Um, when I give this talk in Europe, I normally say think more like the Americans, but now I'm in America. When I say that, I mean have a winning at all costs mentality. You have to be very aggressive in order to acquire users. All of the big startups do very aggressive things on the way up. And think about what other platforms you can use to get to where you want to get to. So Airbnb, they put thousands of ads on Craigslist on the early days. So if you're looking for an apartment on Craigslist, which is a very busy website, they had lots and lots of links out to their website. Likewise, if you put an apartment on Airbnb, they put it back across and vice versa. This drove them loads and loads of early traffic and was a massive kickstart to them. BuzzFeed stole thousands of articles or article ideas off Reddit, Imgur, Tumblr, and then wrapped them up in a few new titles and then created their own articles. It was generally speaking, low quality content, but it doesn't matter. They did what they had to to get those investment rounds, to get those eyeballs. Now they actually do brilliant journalism. But they knew that they had to scoop up all of that content to get to where they want to get to. Genius is a lyrics website. 2% of all Google searches are for lyrics, so SEO is their acquisition strategy. And they were caught by Google asking bloggers to link to them over other lyrics sites. So they were suddenly blacklisted from Google. They went from page one for most songs to absolutely nowhere. But by this stage, they had like $20 million investment. So presumably, they called up the CEO of Google and said, sorry, because they were back on Google pretty quickly. The point is, once you're rich, you can delete your past. So <laughs> do whatever you need to in order to get that investment money, in order to get that revenue in, so you can quit your other job or whatever it takes. Um, that's the story of how startups are successful. So this is a typical growth engine for an app. Number one, you make people aware it exists. Number two, they download, then they have to activate, then they have to share with their friends to bring more users in. It's really hard to do this, but I find most companies don't do this one here. Like, it's really hard to get 100 people to download your app. So if you don't have a sharing mechanism where they invite three, four, five of their friends, you're making things really hard for yourself. Typical sharing mechanisms include uh, get it free for one, two, three months if you invite five people and they sign up. Get 10% off if you share this on Facebook. Um, basically, have something that works in their favor. Of course, the best one of these of all time is Uber. Get $20 Uber credit when you invite a friend to use Uber. Incredible acquisition. So think about how you're going to get people to share. Uh, Andrew Chen did a study. 90% of people who download an app will never use it after one week. So that means if you get a thousand app downloads, only a hundred will stay. So when you think about that, you've really got to get that sharing going. This is Sumo Me. So when someone is moving their mouse about to leave your page, they get a pop-up saying, don't go. We found the three secrets of social media. Leave your email and we'll send you a white paper. Or we'll give you 15% of anything in store this month if you leave your email for a newsletter. Have a good call to action. But this way, you'll capture more leads as they leave. This is also by Sumo Me. Sumo Me, uh, it's on WordPress. doesn't require any code. Really simple to install. It also has this sharing bar. So very, very prominent buttons and will increase the number of shares on any content you produce. But this is the secret formula to getting returning users. So it starts with an external hook. Someone tells you about something. 
Then there's an action, you do something, you get a variable reward, you invest some time, and then you have an internal trigger that makes you go back. We don't go on Pinterest and Facebook because the content is good. We go on because it might be good. We're sitting there feeling a bit bored or anxious at work, and then we think, maybe we'll check Facebook to see if anything good is happening. That's an internal trigger. Facebook has not brought you back, your own brain has. So think about what you need and whatever your product is to make this happen. If you're a blogger, is it you're blogging every single day so people have to go back to your site to see if you have a new update? Eventually, you want people to just be sitting there and come to your site automatically. So when you sign up to LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, you might notice your email gets completely blown up until you turn notifications off. So this is Mandrill by MailChimp. You can automate all of those things on your app. So if someone doesn't sign in for a week, they automatically get an email to come back to us. If someone hasn't invited enough friends, they get an email saying you should invite more friends and make yourself happier. But this is real good to use in order to automatically get people back to your app. It's a very overlooked area when we lose users. The good news is there's millions of ways of acquiring users. People get to work and they're bored and they don't want to do work. So if you can get in that flow, whether that's Pinterest, YouTube, blogging, podcasts, whatever it is, there's so many ways you can acquire users. Um, and you don't really know what you're doing. Um, but that's okay. So this is Clarity.fm. This has the world's best experts that give advice for a dollar fee per minute. Um, so if you want to very quickly grow an email list and you have no idea what you're doing, you could try and read a couple of blogs or you could pay an expert $10 a minute for a 20 minute conversation. It sounds pricey, but they have the world's best people in PR, in social media, in marketing, in SEO, sitting on this site and you get incredible advice that is very, very actionable. So Clarity.fm is a great place to go if you want advice on a very specific area and you don't know where to begin. There's lots and lots of ways of acquiring users. Uh, so everything from affiliate programs, offline ads, business development. There's so many ways you can get people to your idea. There's a great book written about this called Traction. I can't go through all of these, but I will go through social media and email marketing and real life, which are applicable to pretty much every company. So people sometimes say, should we launch or should we try and build an email list first? And the answer is, if you have time, you should always build an email list. It means that on day one, people actually care about what you're doing. Your default state is no one cares about what you're doing. So if you have that email list, you have a massive advantage. So Mint is the most boring company of all time. They are a personal finance app which helps you spend more responsibly. They're like a nagging auntie that says you shouldn't spend so much on this this month. Like, you would not think that this product could be viral, but they did one of the best pre-launch strategies of all time. So they had nine months, they were doing written content, it was incredible. They were getting experts to answer Q&As that people were sending in about finance. They had an email box at the end of every single blog post that required 20,000 to 30,000 emails. Bloggers who wanted Mint before anyone else put an I want Mint sticker on their blog on the front page of their blog and that drove search engine optimization and real traffic. The founder spent one week out of every two months doing PR. They did lots and lots of search engine optimization and ended up their cost of user acquisition was under a dollar. So if you think personal finance, the most unsexy thing in the world, could have a massive, massive impact. Within one year they had a million users. Then whatever you're doing, there is a way of finding people interested in it, creating good content and getting that buzz. Real life is really underrated. When you're starting out, you tend to not know who your users are. So you tend to want to hide behind a computer, maybe do a bit of Twitter stuff, maybe do a couple of Facebook ads. But real life is the easiest way of getting people to sign up to your app. When I say the easiest, it takes the most effort. But if you wanted to get a thousand users on your app, you would just have to go to five events a week and physically sign up 50 people and then you have your first thousand. My friends run an events app in London. They printed out a letter saying, we all quit our jobs to start this company. We all live together in one tiny flat. If you like going out in London, please download our app and let us know what you think. They put this letter in an envelope and they stood in a subway station in East London every morning for two weeks, giving it to everyone who went by. They made the prediction anyone working all day in London would want to go out at night. And they got thousands of sign-ups, they met partners, they met investors, and it took them like an hour a day that they would otherwise be drinking coffee in. So go and find where your users are in real life and get out there and hustle them. 
And if you don't know where your users are, that is a very bad thing. You should find out. So eventually these guys worked out their target audience wasn't hip, young, cool people into awesome bands. They were actually yuppies who had no idea where to go out in London. They had lots of money and then they had this app that would open it and tell them where to go. And that was amazing and that drove their early user growth. So finding your users in real life is amazing, not least because you have to face that some people will tell you your idea sucks, which no one wants. You can also do some of this online, so I've included a list of 190 Slack communities, and again, this is people who sit there all day at work and don't want to do any work, so their eyeballs and their brains are in here, and you can get in that flow and often something in.